So wait a second. Did I not beat the game last time we played this? Because we definitely had like an epic, epic ending. Like we had a super awesome ending. Um, I'm wondering if there's more. We did, we did beat the game. That was the end of the game. Okay, I figured as much. But like, are there multiple endings? Oh, there are multiple endings. Oh. There are more endings. Well, cool. I mean, I mean, there's so much stuff we haven't done yet. We never went north to the troll. We never, like, there's so much stuff we still have to do. I'm just curious, like, for that. What's our book gonna say? Oh, Defeat Melanus. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's go. Let's check out this new, uh, new creature here. Well, first of all, we can summon the raven five times instead of three. That's awesome. Um, what is adaptive? Include special options to evolve into different cards. Okay. Hey, Balthazar with 117. How are you, dude? Good to see you, man. Deal four damage. If damage is dealt, inflict two burning and two frostbite. Summon the Raven. Inflict frostbite on all enemies for each connection. You have, oh, you have insubstantiality. Well, that's interesting. Hmm. Have I beat the game as Percival? No. No, after this round, we'll go back and do a Percival round. What is this adaptive thing? Oh. Include special options on Evolve. Okay. Oh, whoops. It did not work. Not a chance. I'm glad you're not sick, Ko. Haven't seen you coughing in a while. Out. Burn, gain one connection. Oh, set. We'll get set an example. That can be good early. Banned forever, Nodders. Nodders. Okay. Oh, we can check out bird training. No, we're going to gamble. Gain 20 gold. Okay. Could be worse. We lost everything. Don't ban that person. Oh, but I want to. What about a little bit? Can I a little bit? That's cool, man. That's real cool. And that's how he died. Good morning, Sadik. How are you, bud? Mm. Martin Sable says, I kind of feel like this happens with any game that gets way more attention than expected on release. The devs make a misstep and everyone freaks out over it. I would agree that things are a tad confusing, but I have no problem giving them time to, to figure it out. Martin Sable, I get that. And I understand where you're coming from. I do, I do want to say this. I play video games for eight to plus hours a day and have for almost 12 years. Once human is a unique situation. That game has pivoted so much. They have changed their intentions so often. They have... Once human is a unique situation. It is not just a, oh, they got a lot of eyes and now people are forgetting. No. 
Like they have, they have said things that they have gone back on. They have announced things that have been, been with retracted. They have said things are going to happen that they've then changed without telling people. Um, they, there, there, there is, there is an, there is an issue <laughs> over there that, that most devs do not have. It is a different thing. Yeah, so just, I would not, I would not boil it down to being that simplistic, is what I would say. Yeah. Maybe I changed? Yes. That's not a maybe. Yeah. Absolutely. No more Seven Days to Die? No, I'm playing Seven Days to Die this afternoon. Yep. Yep. Okay, let's go here. No, it, it, but I, I do want to end what I was just saying about Once Human. Even though they've been making all of these problems um, for themselves in a lot of ways, they're also working their ass off trying to make their game good. So it's like, it, it's, it's, you know, and I need to make sure I say that every time I talk about what's human. Yeah, they may be screwing up all over the place and shooting themselves in the foot often, but like, they're, they're trying, man. <laughs> they're trying. Like, I, I wish they, I honestly wish that the team had significantly more resources because it's clear that they'd be able to deliver a better vision, but they are, they are doing a lot and their team isn't gigantic and there's, there's translation issues and it's just, it's a, it's a big old myth. <laughs> That's just what it comes down to. Like there's so many things going on. It is a big old mess. Yep. Yeah. Hi diddly ho neighbor. But they're trying to their credit. They're trying. Which is one of the reasons I will continue to revisit it as they change it. Uh, I may not, I may not dive back in full time, but I will, I'm definitely going to be following the saga of Once Human. No question. I'm very interested to see where this goes. Uh, let's do the troll. Mm -mm. Oh, hi VIP. How are you? Oh, I just realized I didn't, I didn't add a, uh, I didn't do a viplosion to that last ad block. Viplosion coming. I wanted to explain to him that I didn't have the strength to pull out the sword, but the monster got very offended and hit me. Okay. I think that's fair. I do. Alright, we can only attack him once per turn. Breather never hurt anybody. Have you ever been able to extract the sword? Yeah, many times. It's a gamble. Um, if you pull out the sword, you just get like a basic sharp sword. It's never, it's never ever been anything interesting, unfortunately. Unfortunately. What's a viplosion? Uh, a viplosion is when I press a button and it re-rolls our VIP system, which targets non-subs. Uh, into the into the last hour of chat activity. So basically, if I do a viplosion, anyone you see with a purple diamond next to their name is somebody who is a non-sub that has been in this community for a very long time. And what that does to me is it puts this nice little bullseye over their head so I can snipe them with a gifted sub. Yep. As a thank you for being here for as long as I can. Mm -hmm. Yep. There we go. Uh, okay. We're going to expose. And then I'm going to do this. Boom. Boom. He's going to go crazy. Bring this guy out. And now that he is furied up and dealing double damage, we're going to pop you out. With two insubstantiation. And we're going to do some damage. one is done. Easy. Mm -mm. Oh, Renea. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -mm. Oh, wait, what was Ko saying? I think Ko is not saying that the game and company are bad more than he is frustrated by the fact that a good, maybe great game is suffering from confusing communication despite the devs trying really hard to cater to the fans. Thank you for putting that in words that I clearly couldn't do good. Thank you. That's exactly, that's, that's the exact way I feel about this. It's like, it's, 
The part that frustrates me the most about Once Human is how hard they're trying and how many obstacles both they and everyone else is putting in front of them. That's the part that sucks. Um, and 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 I agree. I want I want I want nothing more than to them for them to succeed. I have literally spent hours meeting with them, both their NA people and I've met with their Chinese team and had a translator in the meeting translating our responses back and forth. Um, you know, I, I want this game to succeed, or I want that game to succeed. But yeah, it's it's like we talked about. It's a it's a crazy situation. Okay, gain six block for each enemy that intends to attack. That's gonna quickly get overwhelmed. Restore five health for each enemy that does not intend to attack. Oh. And then we can upgrade that to, what, ten block? Not bad. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll get that. Let's get cover. Let's get cover. Spider's Fury. At Co Carnage, do you think a game like Once Human can do something that a MMO can do? Can the game ignore seasons and just rely on expansion? Oh, I think it absolutely could. But I think it, like, at this point, they can't. Like, they've, they've made so many promises about what the game is going to be that they have to take that into account for all their future plans to maintain their current player base and not just lose it. So it's, they, they can't at this point just turn it into the MMO that I think a lot of people want. I think a lot of people played Once Human, like me, and they were like, man, I wish this was an MMO. I wish this wasn't a free-to-play game. I wish this was a fully featured MMO with a full equipment system and drops and dungeons. I, I want Defiance 2. It, and, and playing Once Human feels like a new Defiance, but then the mechanics are free-to-play instead of MMORPG. So your question was, do you think a game like Once Human can do something that an, MM, like, that an MMO can do, like the game can ignore seasons and just rely on expansions? Absolutely. And I wish they had have, had have done that and made that decision a year before beta because then they could have done it right and they could have made it work but at this point there's there are too many systems that do not cater to that so it, it is it is it, I hate to say it but I feel like it's too late for one human at this point to try that yeah it sucks but I mean for, for it to work they would need to like for that, for that game to become an actual MMO, they would need to remove the gotcha machine, add blueprints loot to all the dungeons, add significantly more dungeons, add significantly more things that are interesting to farm outside of just mods. Like, they, like there's so many small systems that would need to be touched, changed, edited, updated. And then the entire macro structure of the game would have to be completely retconned, essentially. Um, so no, I don't think that's doable now. That being said, I think Once Human proves that the world needs another MMO FPS. MMO FPS is a genre that has essentially died. There hasn't been one since Defiance, and that was the first game I streamed on Twitch. So I am publicly saying, if any of you know any MMO FPSs that need funding, let me know. Um, because I will point all of my funding guns at it. And we will and we and we will see about hopefully getting it made. <laughs> but my god, dude, there's there are no companies out there that are making MMO FPSs like Defiance. And they are so much fun. So much fun. They're so great. It's such a good genre. And I mean, hell, the Defiance game was more popular than the show. Obviously, there's stuff there. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a thing. Anyway, sorry. I went on a bit of a, a tangent there, but yeah. Can you give Destiny 2 some money? No, I would never want to give Destiny to money. Destiny isn't an MMO FPS. Um, no. And also, uh, I mean, they've decided how they want to make their money, and I'm not super on board with that. They're they're like with their retconning content and their and their models and like that's that's not. Nah. Uh, Crazy Crin says, Defiant, such a train wreck. I worked at Tryon on another team, and wow. Crazy Crin, I have had some, uh, some, some very, I've had some, I've talked to Scott Hartsman <laughs> about, about Tryon and Defiance and, and, uh, and that kind of stuff. Even Rift, no, he's, he's a, he's a very cool guy. But, yeah, I, I know that, I know that the, the entire Defiance project was a thing. <laughs> So, yeah, it was it was a thing. It was a thing. 
Can you describe what an MMO FPS would be like? I'm having trouble imagining. An MMO FPS is once human with an MMO RPG framework instead of a free to play framework. That is what an MMO FPS is. It is essentially an MMO where instead of auto attacking or, or action RPG combat, you are firing guns. That's basically about it. Third or first person, doesn't matter. But it's essentially a ranged based MMO that generally requires some aiming. If auto aiming is a thing, then the FPS goes off a little bit, but generally MMO FPS is an MMORPG that involves more aiming or Twitch based mechanics. Yeah. Which most of the time MMOs do not need unless you're doing ground targeting, which is a, a... this is a discussion for another time, but <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, that's, that's the general gist of it. Uh, so even, oh, this is interesting. Even if we pull the pet out, we can't insubstantiate all of these hits. Let's do this. Um, I kill one of them? I don't think so. Well. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Oh! Nice! Wait, does Frostbite do damage? Oh, it does damage at the end of the turn. Okay. If Destiny isn't an MMORPG FPS, what is it? It's an online multiplayer game. Yep. There's a distinction between massively multiplayer online and online multiplayer. The keyword is massive. There's nothing massive about Destiny. Even when you go to the cities, it just hand picks a handful of people to show you other people that are there. There's no massive. There. Um, it's like, like many games these days, online multiplayer games use mechanics to obfuscate the fact that you're only playing with a few people to make it feel like you're playing an MMO when you actually aren't. That's, that's the point. Lots of games do that. They use, they use, they use mechanics to obfuscate that you are only actually playing with a handful of people. Um, it is not by no means massive. And for those wondering like how I would define that, the way that I would define if a game is a massive MMO is if you can run into the same place as a friend of yours in a public zone. And if you see your friend there, that is a massive multiplayer game. If you can figure out his instance and transfer to it, and see him there. That's arguably an MMO. But if you have to go there, add them to your friends list and invite them to your game, that is an online multiplayer game. That is that is a game that is trying to get you. Because there's no, in that case, there's no actual instance. They're all fabricated for the individual player. And then there's there's no there's no massive to it. So that's that's how that works. That's what it that's why an MMO is not an MO. And why it kind of drives me crazy when people like Destiny call their games MMOs, because they aren't, Bungie. They aren't. And you're using that as a buzz term to try to sell, uh, sell your game. And that's not what an MMO is. It's an MMO. Well, agree to disagree. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. If you go by the, de the definition that Bungie puts forth at what an MMO is, then like almost all online multiplayer games are MMOs, and that's just wrong. That's just wrong. Like, it's just, that's just not right. Most online multiplayer games are not MMOs, but if you go by Bungie's de definition, they are. That's just not right. So, yeah. <laughs> that's all. Yeah, that would be, in that case, Diablo 3 is an MMO. Like, it, 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 it no. <laughs> that's not, that's not right. No. Stop it. Baldur's Gate 3 would be an MMO. No, uh, maybe not Baldur's Gate 3. There's no, there's no community mechanics. Which are what you would call social hubs or community mechanics. Community obfuscation mechanics. And by the way, let me let me say this. I'm not saying it's wrong to do that. Like I, I love I love what Diablo 3 does. I love what Destiny does. The the fact that they can emulate like playing in public but on significantly smaller resources, that's smart. Right? That's smart. I'm just saying don't call it what is it what it isn't. That's that's the only point I'm making. It's a smart, very, it's a cool progression of technology 
to see it evolve to where it is now. Um, I, I love seeing that. It's great. We may not, I mean, honestly, with how hard MMOs are to make, there's, I think there's a reason that we see so few of them these days. Um, because people are realizing it's much easier to develop a faux MO like Destiny than it is an actual MMO like Ashes of Creation or Pantheon. They've both been in development for like a thousand years now. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, uh, it's an interesting, interesting thing to talk about for sure. Uh, you know what? I always hide here for the gamble because I always assume if we fail the gamble, then it's a fight. So why not always try to hide? I've never tried battling. But it does just say regular battle. So I'm wondering, like, is there any reason to click this? Wouldn't you always want to try to hide? I guess unless you want that loot and everything. Because there's a chance you could actually hide from them. Let's find out. Let's science it a little bit. The co stopped playing once human. I got the start of the stream and had to go. Oh, no. Today, I was just looking at the 1.1 patch. That's all I wanted to do. And we did. And it was good. Mm -mm. To be fair, the 1.1 patch is awesome. A lot of great changes. Yeah, we can go ahead and fury them. It doesn't matter because we're, we're desubstantiating all of it. Will you be playing the Alpha 2 of Ashes of Creation? Uh, maybe. I normally do not play things like that this early. Like, I normally wait until release for sure. But honestly, I am so interested in Ashes of Creation at this point that that I'm, I'm going to check it out as early as I can. Yeah, like, I'm... I really hope that game is one that I can play. I, dude, I've been I've been fiending for an MMO for like five years. I I, I need an MMO in my life. <laughs> so, did I rage quit once human? Not really. I, I saw everything I wanted to. I didn't go in expecting to. I, I I tried to make it very clear at the beginning I was not returning to once human. I was just investigating the patch. Uh, let's do... Oh, I guess, what are we doing? Berserk? We're doing Taunt and Zeal. So I think I'm gonna go for this guy. Okay. Investigate these nuts. Nice. I'm all set. Oh, that was a bad idea. Did Bulls. you throw an empty bottle at the enemy after that? Great. Any fun updates on Emberville? We will have a major Emberville update later this year. The team has been working very hard for a long time. And uh, what they've essentially been doing is we are working on the candidate that will be the EA that you guys will be buying next year if you choose to pick it up. And uh, we will soon be having a big news update on the exact state of that, on what we're looking at, on our scope, on all that stuff. I'm very excited to talk about it. Mucho exito. Oh, but why, oh, why did he die? Is Emberville this year? No. Uh, Emberville right now is, is early access Q1 next year, but I'm gonna be blunt with you. It's not gonna come out until we're ready for it to be in EA. So right now it's, 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 Q1 next year for early access with a two to three year development cycle that we are fundamentally involving the community in. Um, that is a current plan, but that may change. The only thing that's not changing is we will have a, a very large update on the state of the game this year, possibly relatively soon. Yep. Are you sharing anything on the price ranges for Emberville EA? Uh, I think we agreed. I, I don't remember what our, what our last thing was, but I think it's going to be like 25 bucks with a 10% off if you buy it in EA. Don't quote me on that though. I think that I think that's where we are. That might change, but that's that's about where we are. We are not doing some massive. No, we're, we're, yeah, it's it's gonna be gonna be nice and well priced, and of course, no in-game purchases of any kind. Uh, you know, we're 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 taking the uh, the Larian approach. To that is a good way to say it. Increase the number of pet summons. 
the pet brings a random card or inflict two frostbite more on all enemies. Not really feeling that, to be honest. Let's take a look at some of these cards we can update. We can update come to increase connection by two. Okay. Oh, and then what's the other effect do? Increase connection by two and gain two block for each connection. Okay, that alone is pretty good. Um, come, 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 come. We should update come. Then come can convert to other things. And then you have different come. I just do this for the next hour. Does that, does that make you happy, chat? <laughs> Chat is freaking out over this the name of this card in here. Oh my god, y'all. Come on now. I, I guess YouTube needs to see a little of this. Um, <laughs> an hour's a little long. Yeah, okay. Didn't realize I wandered into Zeke's stream. Okay, okay. Just a whole, a whole essay on it. Okay. You guys are ridiculous. All right, let's go. This is the quality content I come here for? Well, then have a sub. Dinkus. Okay, let's go to here. Alright, you ready for this? Let's do it. Yeah, now we have upgraded come. We don't have normal come this round. We have a, a super come, if you will. Alright, so we can take two attacks. Let's go ahead and do this. Oh, we furied him because we're we're dumb. Uh, let's go ahead and actually let's pull you out. Okay. Hey, Fiero, mommy. What's up? so much we need to build up far more connection we need to get more defense or healing on her so we can bring these guys out easier. Because I, I feel like with the Raven, we need to bounce back and forth more than with our other pets. I think that's why he has so many summons compared to the other pets. is slowly cooking with this class. We're getting there, man. We're getting there. We're getting there. I'm going to go for it because yeah, we're, we're doing this. Oh, Ithris. Oh, there it is. It's always tough when you work with someone and try to help them make changes in their plans and they refuse to listen. Oh, were you talking about a video game dev? Thanks, failed marriage. Wow. Thanks as always, Ithris. I'll play this for you. Dayblitz. Hey, Ko. Awesome seeing you play this type of game. I've sacked so many hours into this genre. Would be great to see you play across the obelisk. Uh, I have never played that game. 
thank you. Thank you very much. I'll have to check that out. That, that's not the first time that's been recommended. So thank you. All right, I think he's dead next turn. Which is fine. Oh, maybe we should... No, I need him to take the hits. I was going to say, maybe we should unsummon him, but... That inflicted three weakness. Jeez. I realize I'm just piling up fury on him, but I think I think we're okay. Okay, little little bumpy. We need we need better management when we're the uh, when we're Vanitas. Oh, permafrost. Interesting. Okay. Yo. Oh, we need to get a regen dude. that thing we can't take it if we don't find healing we're just dead <laughs> 